From time to time in 3D printing, you might encounter the dreaded layer shift. If that happens to you and you've got an organic part, you might just be able to salvage the print using a 3D printing pen. I'm going to show you how in today's video. Let's go. So I recently printed this Benedict Cumberbatch or Doctor Strange mask. And unfortunately, some way through the print, the layers decided to shift across. Funnily enough, they ended up shifting back and we've ended up with this sort of two millimeter piece sticking out the side on one side and a divot on the other side. What I'm gonna do, firstly, is clear off the supports and then I'm gonna have a go at squaring this back up with a 3D printing pen. I've done many a support cleanup over the years and I have a few tools that I like to use, namely my flush cutters, Stanley Life, and also my chisel. What are the main tools that you like to use in your support cleanups? Where print hairs show up on the print, I also like to use a heat gun. As always, rather than throwing out your print waste, in this case support material, don't forget to box it up and check with your manufacturer if they can recycle it. Link there to 3D Tomorrow Print Waste Recycling. Okay, so what we're gonna do is take the 3D printing pen, load it up with some of the same material. In this case, this is from the old 3D Smart Development stock, Signal Blue. Load it up, and we're gonna start on this divoted side and actually fill it up with more material from the 3D printing pen. It's always a good idea to remember to extrude a fair length of filaments from the end of the hot end pen. Uh, just so that it changes whatever color you had in previously or it might even be a different material when we're doing repair work like this We want to try and keep the color as consistent as possible in this specific case where this part's going to be post-processed Doesn't matter too much, but still it's always good to try Now the nozzles nice and clean we can go ahead and fill it up At the halfway point on this mask, it then changes to sticking outwards rather than sticking in. So it's a good idea to use a Stanley blade or something similar to take a bit of the material away just so that it's less to melt off. With some of that excess material trimmed away, I can then channel my inner artist to use the pen to smooth the faces back down into a nice continuous curve. Shaping up better now. The inside's a similar story. And then again, flattening down the raised areas. If you have a soldering iron, a temperature controlled soldering iron, that also works really well as the tip of these pens don't get that hot, so you best have them on max setting. I've left mine at work, so I'm sticking to the pen. But uh, yeah, soldering iron is another great tool. On that, is there any sort of tool that you like to use to fix up parts, be it a heat gun or something else that I've never even heard of? Let me know in the comments. Once you've finished adding material with the pen and you're just using it for touch-ups, it's good to take the filament out. Otherwise, it can continue to sort of bubble out the end and leave untidy bits on the print. After that's done, you can then shift to a bit of sanding just to smooth off those last bits of roughness. And there you have it. After a bit of sanding, we've got the Doctor Strange mask looking good as new. Obviously, there is some slight discoloration from the sanding where it goes a bit dull. If you were to require this to be all a continuous color, you could hit it with some clear lacquer, but this is gonna have a full sand and paint job anyway, so it really doesn't matter for now. What did you think? 
you want to print this model yourself, maybe you fancy making your own Halloween costume this year, then it is available on the currently infamous Thingiverse, and I will put the link in the description. Hashtag change your passwords. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and yeah, happy printing. Cheers.